Okay, let's proceed with our agenda for our, our regular agenda for the November 28th meeting. And uh, the first item on that agenda is to vote the language of the special town election ballot and to determine the date of the election, uh, possibly reconsider that date. Um, so let's take those items in order. Um, so we have gotten language from bond council uh, that has been proposed for the ballot. Um, I believe it's been distributed to the board. Um, are there any comments or questions about the wording? of the ballot question well my only question is that the language that we got in um, october uh, was substantially different from the language that we have gotten with this ag this agenda okay and this is um these are the two yeah and um i don't know why they're different okay uh, I, we had a brief conversation I had a brief conversation with uh, Kerry about this earlier today, and um, I understand that this is a very different issue from what the warrant says and what happens at the town meeting. That's right. And that what is put on the ballot um, at the um, at the polls to ratify the vote at the special town meeting um, has. It, it, the vote itself cannot specify the amount. That's right. That's right. But what I what I suggested to Kerry was that um, we make sure this time that the statements that we agreed to adopt um, be actually printed on the ballot, because at the last election, I remember when I went to the polls, they had the statements on separate papers that you could ask for at the tables so that people did not actually see the statements when they were casting their vote and they had to go to extra trouble to actually get that information but is it pro and con statements? Hmm? do you mean the pro and con statements is that what you mean yeah by pro and statements cons. yeah okay I'm but can you sure put that on the ballot they're I don't not know allowed to be on the ballot but yeah. they can be they, well they can... It, it, is it there's a difference between they're not being part of what people actually check the box for, but I don't know, know whether there's a restriction on actually have the statements printed somewhere on the same piece of paper. Well, I think we could just hand out both pieces of paper together. Right. So could we have the town clerk respond to that question? Sure. She she is She's in online. our virtual audience. Okay, great. Yes. But I, the important thing, to, as far as I'm concerned, is that um, you don't want to have people going to the polls and voting for things that they don't really know what they're voting for. That's right. That's why we passed um, that article last last and, time. Um, meeting. That's right. And so I, I want to make it easy for people exactly. to know what it is they're voting for and not have to put them to extra trouble. Correct. Because they're usually in a hurry when they go in to vote. Um, and it's certainly... What, there's going to be a lot of mail-in ballots, which is something very important for people to know that this, the the election to uh, ratify what is, uh, assuming that the vote passes by two-thirds at the town meeting, it has to be ratified at the polls. That is going to be an election just like any other election where you can have early voting, mail-in ballots and all that stuff well the early voting is if we authorize it. if we authorize it but is we can authorize it um and in any event we can have mail-in ballots and um i want to make sure that the uh, the information will get mailed out with the ballots so that when people get a mail-in ballot they have that information okay uh let's turn to Ms. karitari to our town clerk to give us a little uh, info on what is feasible. Thank you. Uh, Kari Maitari, town clerk. I did actually check with the director of elections about including um, the pro and con language on the ballot prior to the September um, special town election ballot and was told that that is not legally allowed. That would take an, a special act of legislature to approve that. 
Okay. So, but then so. what about the other proposals that we either, uh, well, first of all, that we send out the uh, informational booklet along with the ballots when we mail out the ballots so that they're together. And that secondly, that the can uh, the election workers hand ballots along with the booklet at the same time to voters as they are voting? The, the information must be available uh, that is sent to voters must be available at the polling location. I do not know whether it can be mailed or handed out with the ballot to voters, but I will find that out. Okay, and, and actually with the information packet, we are sending that to every address, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so that would be different because people would request a mail-in ballot. They wouldn't automatically get a mail-in ballot. ballot. Correct. One other suggestion that maybe we could consider is even if the, um, the material cannot be printed on the ballot, which is, I think, where we stand, is it possible to actually paste those statements inside the voting Oof. carols where people are voting so that they can, it is right there in front of them so they can see it I don't, without no, having I, to ask for it? I, I doubt if pro-con advocacy could happen in the bro voting booth, but that's just my guess. I don't, I'm not the legal. Enforcer. I will ask. Well, yeah, we'll ask. Okay, but my, my you understand my point is I want yeah. people to understand what they will be voting for, and that has nothing to do with whether I'm in favor or against. no. It's just that the the booklet does have pro con statements, right? It's not strictly right, but it has both, so it is yeah. a good question. Maybe it can go in the booths. Okay. 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 So I guess. All of that was about procedure, but in terms of the language of the ballot question, that was, that's one of the items that we need to deliberate on here. Everybody okay with the ballot question? Well, as um, what has written? changed? Yeah, so I, I would like to follow up on that. The language of the ballot question is the same now as it was originally presented. I believe you're looking at the warrant article, and the warrant article language is different. Yeah. Uh, because and it will that, be different, okay. continue right. to be okay. different. Okay. Yeah. And so the this question is very much like the question that was asked um, at, at the last special election with the uh, additional language that it talks about paying for the additional cost additional associated. Yeah. But still, no no dollar amount is allowed to be included in the ballot question. OK. So if there aren't any other questions, perhaps we should vote on that. Okay. Move to approve the special town election ballot language as included in the select board meeting packet tonight. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So now we have a ballot. Now, um, we have received a lot of correspondence. Uh, regarding the date that has been proposed for the special election. And while this date has been on the calendar for some weeks, I don't think that really anybody uh, picked up uh, the, the potential conflict uh, with it being uh, during school vacation week until our school superintendent uh, noted it during a, a building committee meeting. Um, and since then, uh, you know, of course, uh, there's been a lot of interest in that date. So uh, I have asked about whether the date can be moved. And in fact, at the moment, it's really uh, just a date on a calendar. Now, there is the, the situation that that calendar has been socialized so that people who now are aware of that as a date could be disenfranchised if the date would be changed at this point. On the other hand, there's also a, a large constituency in town that is uh, related to the schools that has an interest in this issue that very well may be away that week because it's school vacation week. So even with uh, the possibility of mail-in voting and early voting, um, you know, there there is the possibility that moving the date could provide uh, for a better election in terms of voter access. 
So that's the question before us. Uh, do we leave the date as it is, as it's been uh, published in the calendar, or do we propose or, and actually uh, codify a new date for this election? So I open it up to the floor. I have a question. There's nothing special about that date. In other words, there wasn't, it wasn't. Okay, set. so let me just say, uh, and I think, uh, Kari, you're, you, did you set the date? So my understanding was that that, that date was, was set with a plan to have special town meeting vote on the article before the election was called. So before the language of the ballot was voted and that there's a 35 day minimum window between when the election or the language is voted and forwarded to the town clerk and when the election can be held. Right. And so then that was the date that you put on the ballot or on the calendar was 35 days later, or at least the 36 first... days later, that Friday, right. so that it, yeah, it counted for one snow day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, you know, now, of course, we have been able to vote the language of the ballot. So we're not constrained by that 35 day limit. And so now we're really free to set a date that could be earlier. Um, and there's also, I think, a second uh, reason to have uh, the election earlier if we can. And that is because the bidding process is uh, imminent. Um, and so to have the election, to have the results from the election and to understand whether bidding can proceed is, I think, material. Um, so uh, and, and of course, you know, we were trying to make it uh, as quick as we could based upon the constraints that we thought we had. But now I think that we don't have those constraints. We can we, we have the possibility of pulling it forward. So, so I have a couple of questions about that logistically. Is there any reason why the language would change at the special town meeting? Um, I no, can't no, no, that. there isn't at all. Okay, no, I think good. that the, just the assumption that. was right. we, we have the special town meeting, and if it didn't get voted at special town meeting, right. then why have an election? But, right. um, you know, right. okay. yeah. And um, another um constraint was the 90 percent uh data was going to come in and i don't remember when that's coming oh in. yeah but that's all relative that's to the, the special, special town, town meeting, meeting. Yeah, okay. so that's, yeah. and then the last uh other two constraints i guess would be whether there's enough time to produce those yes and no brochures that we were just talking about um, which I think there is, but I just want to make sure. Yeah, and I think that that's why, while we could pull it forward, we don't want to pull it forward too close to special town meeting. Right. We want to give adequate time. And I was thinking about three weeks' time would three, be about three weeks after the special, be, you know, the minimum. But actually, I think we could even take four weeks in this case. Right. So it, um, I was curious what um, Kari thought about staff time. Um, whether you're comfortable with three or four weeks after the special. Um, so three, right. Um, I would suggest the February 16th, which is a Thursday, which works better for my office than a Friday. Mm -hmm. um, it, it allows ample time following special town meeting to have ballots distributed, you know, four weeks vote so. by mail. Yeah. yeah. I think February 17th would be bad because people are leaving for school vacation. So we have the same problem anyway. Um, I would really be in favor of moving the election so that the maximum number of people have the opportunity to vote. In person, if they would prefer. In person, by mail, however they want to vote. Um, any other comments? Sure. Um, I think that the, uh, the choice of the date was completely administrative and result neutral. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't choose it. There was no, I don't think there was any political input right. into the choice no. of the date. Um, and so I think that um, 
I think there's, I have, I have a kind of a, a difficulty with the principle of setting a election date based on which constituency may be more available to vote on that date. I think that's just a bad way to <clears throat> um, uh, structure elections. And the only objective should be to maximize the participation across the board, well, yes. not maximize participation, say, for the people who are school advocates or the people who are low tax advocates or whatever. Because at the same time that people are away on school vacation, there are older people who um, are, are maybe more ec economically affected who might be in Florida or North Carolina for the winter and the snowbirds and they may be away. And that was my original thought that that choice of date would actually uh, disfavor those those voters who were out of town. And so uh, I just have trouble um, moving an election date in order to make it more available to a certain constituency. Um, and especially that now that we know that people can vote by mail and that we can have a very substantial participation by mail in ballot if people care to exercise that right. So I think that the date of that election becomes far less relevant because of the fact that people have alternative means of voting, uh, whether they're on vacation or school vacation or in Florida for the winter or, or whatever. So um, if the board is in favor of changing the date, I will vote with the board because I don't really, um, I don't, um, I, I, I don't, I don't really have, um, <clears throat> I will do that as long as it's understood that there is an issue um, uh, that we need to consider for the future in uh, things of this kind. Okay. Any other comments? Yes. I just have a comment that I, I want to, we got a lot of letters and I really want to thank the people who um, assumed that this was not done deliberately mm. and that this was really done it was an, an honest oversight by many people and i i really want to appreciate i really appreciate the people who assumed that and i think assuming the best goes a long way towards civility so i want to thank people who wrote those letters and matt uh, took the trouble to respond to almost all of those letters you did yes yes wow. um, well no i just well it was a general general was, okay. response but okay. yes uh, so they, of the no, all of the letters that were received uh, which most of them had a common theme. Um, Matt uh, sent out a response to uh, inform right. them about uh, how this all was working and that this was, um, you know, and that we would be look, discussing the best tonight. we could to deal with it. Yeah. yeah. So for me, I think that it it almost doesn't matter which constituency it was that might be inconvenienced by this it just happened to be the school contingent contingent this time but really you know if we set a date and it turns out to be a religious holiday or you know some some other celebration then i think we need to correct that and i think that this is a case where it's a compelling case that there are a significant number of voters who would be inconvenienced and I, I think that it's sort of beside the point uh, because we can't presume how they will vote, but you know, our assumptions, uh, it, it shouldn't matter. It's really about providing the greatest access to the polls and recognizing that in fact, you know, this at the moment has only been a, a date on a calendar and not a very heavily socialized one and that the level of socialization of this uh, election will increase dramatically from here forward. Right. Okay, are we ready for a vote then? All right, uh, motion. Okay, move to approve the date of the special town election as February 16th, 2023. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Then all in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Thank you. Okay, on to our next item, which is a liquor license amendment application for a change of managers at Fiorellis at 24 Walton Street. And I am excusing myself on this because of my relationship with the 
applicant. Okay, I thank you. So who do we have speaking for the applicant? Thank you. Please step ahead and uh, announce yourself. Hi. Good evening. My name is Leslie Palola. Thank you for having me. It's nice to see you all. And your role with Fiorella is? General manager. Okay. So tell us about your application. Um, so I've been with Fiorella's for five years. Um, I've been a manager there since we opened. Um, I am now the general manager and I'm applying for the uh, liquor license to be changed to my name. Okay. Did those of you review the application? All right. Um, I, any questions or concerns? Well, this might be a very short hearing. <laughs> <laughs> then could I have a motion, please? Move to approve the change of manager for Fiorella's as listed in the packet. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, no. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, <laughs> hope to see, see you. Thank Good you. luck. <laughs> Oh, I have a question. Yes. How late are you guys open on Mondays? On Mondays? Yes. Nine o'clock. Okay. Oh, well, we have uh, to yes. have a very short meeting to be yeah, able to okay. make it there. I'll have okay. them stay open if you want to head over there. No, <laughs> not tonight. I don't think <laughs> we have much night, chance tonight. That's, That's why I just call me. All right. All right. But let's continue with our meeting. Thank you. All right. Um, so now we're going to talk about uh, the potential uh, select board sponsored Warren articles uh, for annual town meeting. Um, basically, we have on December 3rd, the town meeting preview meeting in which um, the various town bodies are to uh, preview which articles they intend to bring to annual town meeting. And so this is the time for us uh, to think about those and whether we need to work with others, other town boards and committees to make sure that they uh, get uh, drafted. Uh, I should also note that December 16th is the date when draft warrant articles are meant to be uh, submitted for legal review. So we only have one other meeting ourselves before then. So if other, again, if other town boards and committees are actually drafting the warrant articles, that's fine. But if we're, you know, in needing to do anything, uh, we should think about that. And, and we should also just uh, decide which ones of those that are presented on the third we want to sponsor. So I was, I just went down the list of a few that I'm aware are out there. Uh, so for example, I attended um, the combined meeting of the Comprehensive Sustainable Energy Committee and uh, Climate Action Advisory Board, and they are drafting a Warren article uh, to adopt the new specialized energy code, otherwise known as the Net Zero Code. And that, interestingly enough, would, I think, complement and reinforce the uh, fossil free infrastructure work. Um, which of course we are in less control of because we still have don't having gotten the rules and regs of and all of that so we could adopt that specialized energy code the second uh one is that was we were previously discussing for special town meeting was to reallocate the funds uh from the housing reserve of the community for reservation committee to uh the affordable housing trust and uh the Community Preservation Committee is drafting that article working with town council. Um, and then the third one here, uh, we've just gotten a read from uh, the Concord Housing Foundation and, and the Affordable Housing Trust that about um, allocating free cash to the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust as we have done in past years. And, it, and the Housing Trust is actually not requesting funds this year for from free cash. And I think that that's probably just as well because we have plenty of potential uses for free cash. Um, and then there are other articles that we could either author or sponsor, um, you know, for annual town meetings. So I'm just open it to the floor um, to see Don't what you'd like to do. Do we have to do something to get the money that we allocated from free cash to the Christopher Heist project back into free cash? Isn't there? Don't we have to? I thought. Mina said we had to do something. 
Oh, I, Mina and I were going round and round. Oh, okay. I, I don't think we've settled on who's winning that argument. <laughs> yeah, but uh, okay. we, we, we will get that settled. And okay. Okay. But, you know. So okay. that's, be, that's being t okay. taken yeah. care of okay. yeah, one way or another. Okay. Okay. So if the housing trust isn't asking for money from free cash, are they going to ask for the money from what was allocated to Christopher Heights? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so that's yeah, an argument. Yes, we yeah. have. <laughs> well, uh, that yeah. Well, I mean, well, that that we will sponsor that. I think again, it's the CPC that's drafting it. No, no, no. no the CPC the has a million, and then the other million. Oh, the other million. Yes, we so would like that money to go. Sponsor. Yes, Mr. Chairman, if I could, it's Keith Bergman. If I could address that. Yeah. Um, we, uh, the trust has voted to request that um, the, the entire amount of $2,044,255.76, which previous town meetings have committed to um, the uh, uh, Christopher Heights Junction Village, uh, that, that, that those monies uh, be um, deposited in the trust by apparently it would take two actions of town meeting. One, as you're talking about, the uh, CPC uh, is uh, is handling the uh, the million and change that uh, is in uh, uh, is in CPC uh, CPA funds, and that will uh, is being handled in uh, the article at a special town meeting. Uh, the remainder is a an appropriation. From uh, which which was from free cash, but it's an article balance of a uh, million dollars in Article Thirty of the 2017 Annual Town Meeting. So, how, however, that could get deposited in the trust um, uh, is uh, by action of town meeting is what we're requesting, so that those monies that have been uh, earmarked for 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 uh, affordable housing uh, r remain available for that. And and um, and as such, the the trust would not uh, uh, request uh, free cash money. We know there's a lot of competition from others for that, and that uh, we you know be more than happy to to have the uh, the the transfers of uh, amounts that were previously appropriated. So thanks a lot. Thanks, Mr. Bergen. Um, and it sounds like Carrie that whether or not we need some action to release the funds that million dollars mm -hmm. that we would still need some action yes. to appropriate that to, to so it sounds like one way or the other one article will probably handle either the two-sided transaction or the mm -hmm. one-sided transaction that's needed okay we don't have to decide tonight do we no <clears throat> no one other thing that um <clears throat> I, I um, discussed with Kerry this morning, which was the funding of the 250th oh, anniversary, yeah. mm -hmm. and that having that be a warrant article that would be sponsored by the select board, um, and then we're going to be working on the budget between now and then. That's a good idea. Okay. I'm so sorry. what we would put an XXX amount in there? Yes. Now? For what? Yes. I'm sorry, I missed that. This is for the 250th anniversary. But Which but for work. the warrant, we're going to need to put a yes certain number in there. We will. But oh, so you're saying your well, very next meeting? You're no, be no. But we're going. We'll be going to the FinCom and talking with them about numbers. And Do you have an order of magnitude? Um, we're going to have to spread it out over two years, and the number each year is going to be close to a million. Wow. Well, it's based on multiplying the two hundred and. Uh, the 200th of adjusting it for inflation. That would be 625,000. Yeah, it's 125,000 times five. Well, I think it comes out to more, but we're, we're working on the numbers. Okay. Well, where would the funds come from? Hmm? Where would the funds come from? It would be an appropriation by town meeting. Okay. But, well, but whenever you ask for money at town meeting, you have to say where the money's coming from. Right, so I have a question um, for Carrie about that, and for, and for you, Henry. Are are any of the events going to charge any fees? Is there any possibility of having like a temporary enterprise fund or? or there, yes, there is. There is. There, there are many. Uh, there are many options, but the point is that the expense at the stage we're at now, the expense is is not. We, the major part of the expense is going to be in twenty. 
2025, right. which we for between now and then. Right. And right. so we need to spread it out over two years. What was uh, 50 years ago was spread out over, I think, six or seven years. Right. And all, okay. And also, you might have to lay lay out money up front and then recover it later. So we might need to set up, I guess it's not an enterprise fund, a revolving fund. Right. So uh, I think that Kerry said that the town could set up a gift fund. Is that what you called it? Yes, that's correct. A gift so, fund. A gift fund, so, yes. Kerry, is so the money... that the money could be appropriated and carried across uh, fiscal years. Yeah. I'm still unclear where the money is actually coming from. Is it coming from gifts? Is it coming from the town budget? Is it coming from free cash? Where's the money coming from? Mr. Dane. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's that's to be determined. I I don't think you're expecting that the entirety of the funding is coming from donations. You're uh, looking for the town to, I think to that make the, the donations will. I think that donations will be only probably for sponsorships and for specific events, um, and um, but for things like public safety, which is probably going to be one of the major expenses mm -hmm. if we're expecting you know in the neighborhood of a hundred thousand people attending as paying fifty dollars a ticket <laughs> well, well that's my question whether they're going to be user fees i mean really you know, no. are, there, are there going to be yeah. are these events like, free really? or are there user fees you know? well that's something we're going to have to decide but we're going to we're going to need to have um the ability to run this thing and it's um the costs are, you know, not insubstantial. So I, I saw on the town calendar that the finance subcommittee for your group is meeting this week. Yes. Right. And I, I assume they meet regularly. Uh, well, the finance, what we did, I've been asking the, we have 10 subcommittees. I've asked them all to uh, prepare um, estimates, budget estimates, and then, and then, um, Rick Laughlin uh, got together with um, with the accountant on the fin our finance committee. Our finance committee consists of Rick Laughlin, a former member of the select board, Phil Swain, a former oh, yeah. member of the fi finance committee, know, and uh, and um, uh, Beth, um, uh, whatever she originally, uh, who is uh, the uh, and a, a CPA who was the treasurer for the BD Center. And uh, Rick got to, you met with her and they came up with a standardized budget format. And this is, was just released to the subcommittees and is going to be used as a standardized uh, kind of um, method of setting out the information, which we're going to then lump together mm -hmm. and come up with you know, a more reliable estimate of the funds that are going to be needed. Uh, if we're going to, there will certainly be things that we will charge admission to. Um, <clears throat> um, there are also things that we have to incur an expense for, which we can't charge admission to, like parades, like public mm -hmm. safety, mm -hmm. like right. certain other events, right. um, um, commissioning music and uh, plays and um, running athletic events and things of that kind, um, where we're going to need the resources to uh, make this work. Um, <clears throat> for the more expensive individual things, we are going to need to find sponsors. Yeah, and but I think one of the things that I found most surprising when Rick Laughlin met with the Finance Committee was his assumption was that this uh 250th would be a net drag on the town's expenses and so we're putting on a party for the world mm -hmm. That's right. and we're paying for it yeah and mm -hmm. i that seems to me to be problematic well, I, I think that that you know an event like this it should you know of course it should help economically for the town's businesses and and you know and for our just a general reputation as a as a town and and perhaps there'll be people renting out their houses as airbnbs if we relax the standards during that period but 
I, I do think that one of the opportunities that we seem to be missing is to regionalize the event, to increase the number of potential funders, the scale of the event, and therefore the attractiveness of marketing to whoever sponsors it, and also the sources of grant funding for regional level grants. And we just as a town, we're sort of all doing it all on our own. And that's creating us as an isolated island that has to pay for everything. And I, I don't think that that's the right strategy. Well, um, I also, think it was of, a battle that took place it, over a number of towns. Are, it, it wasn't really just an, here. An important, an important part of this is a celebration of our civic and historic identity. Sure. Right. And so that um, that uh, there 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 are things that can be shared with other communities, but they are probably not things that um, have much um, in the in the way of um, economic opportunity, other than building up tourism and encouraging tourism. But the um, uh, the state commission. Um, uh, has been very vague about uh, funds that are available from the state. And they are telling us at this point that they are gonna be um, of uh, um, event-oriented grants. And we have no idea how much money they will have. And at this point, they don't really know either. Um, and we have to go on the assumption that we're gonna have to pay for most of it if we wanna do it. Well, I guess it's just the extent that we identify it exclusively as Concord that will will be less attractive for those grants is what what's on my mind and we will be meeting with uh, with Michael uh, Lawson about you know who's the part of the regional group and, and we'll discuss some of these issues for all I, I'm bringing to the board now is just putting that, on that we a, need some article and it's true from a cash flow perspective. and how much how much it is and it's gonna have to go through the process sure okay okay <clears throat> and I know Lexington's um, committee is in full swing, so yeah. they they should be um, brought in somehow. Well, I I met with the, the a member of their select board is the chair of uh, their committee, and also she is the uh, Lexington's representative to the state commission. And I met with her six months ago. Is that Susie Berry? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we talked, and then um, um, communications have not, uh, not have not been uh, kept uh, active really on that. Okay. Uh, I think anyway. she came down with COVID. <laughs> okay. Well, let's let's move on. Uh, okay. So that's another article. I think it certainly is worthy of further discussion. Um, anything else that we should be looking at? Well, there's. You know, now that I'm just thinking about this, um, the personnel board has been really active in the last few weeks, and they will be coming in next meeting. Um, they will be submitting some warrant articles, um, and especially the following year, I think, some more articles. I guess there is a slight chance that the select board might have to sponsor uh depending on exactly what they're going to do if it's just by personnel bylaw i guess they're the ones that sponsor it and and this will i think become clearer when they come in are, are they us. a body that can put an article on the warrant yes but i i think maybe you're referring to a change in their charter so yeah to speak, if there's a change the in their charge we should be doing that. then yeah. we have to do it and i don't know yet what? Well, it's actually in the town charter, so it might. Yeah, I, I know. So it's all still pretty vague, and they're going to be doing their whole presentation next week, and we'll learn more. Okay. The only problem is that is after December 3rd, um, if that makes a difference. Well, we have a meeting on the 5th. And well, right, but the, what do we do for the 3rd, I guess? Well, and we will have another meeting later in the year, so the 19th. So, um, but that's after the articles, draft articles in theory that's should be what, that's what I'm uh, saying. submitted. Yeah. It, it's even, it's okay though, because draft articles can, can still be submitted and we can mm -hmm. still discuss in the 19th, that's fine. Right, so but the warrant closes on January 4th, right? Right, so right. that's the evening that we would have to take action is on the-, the what's, what's the process to make changes to the town charter? Oh, that's a whole big- That's a, that's a legislative- that 
Is that what you're talking about doing with these um, art more articles? Well, so yet. first of all, a town meeting would have to vote, right? And then you would take it to the legislature. So this would be the first step if that's what we're talking about. I don't know what we're well, talking about. Well, you know what? We don't. The personnel board hasn't decided any of any of what they okay, want so to recommend yet. Why don't we just? To. Okay, this, this is a very complicated up. question. Okay. Well, my question is about this Saturday coming up. It seems like the select board does not have any personnel articles but the personnel board might for this Saturday, but then it could change. Okay. And the stabilization funds come from the finance committee or the assessors, any additions to the stabilization fund? The finance committee would do anything from free cash. Yeah, I, I think we would just have one combined. Okay. One article for to deposit money into the stabilization fund, potentially with two sources of Right, funding. and we don't sponsor that. No. Great. Thanks. Okay. We will weigh in. Yes. <laughs> All right. I think that that's it then for us. Um, okay. Then uh, let's move on to our next item, which is, so we, there's no vote that we have to take tonight on that, this point. I just wanted to really get stuff on the table. Um, so the next is a proposed amendment to the White Pond Task Force charge, and we do have in our packet a marked up version of that charge. Um, so, uh, Mary, would you like I to take us through? I want to thank the board's indulgence in this. This is our third go around. The change here I'm making is that um, I had originally um, had the membership at five people and I got a very good response. I put it low, um, but I got a very good response. And so I would like to increase that to seven. And just by the way, I want to know that this board poked fun at me because I was looking for a limnologist. <laughs> we got a limnologist. A what? <laughs> get a, Who's a limnologist? A snail, a, it's a snail specialist. Oh, oh is it really? Yeah. Wow. So, oh. I just wanted to say that. All right. Um, yeah. So I'm asking to increase from um, five to seven members. That's the first thing. And then the other thing I'd like to do is something that Terry asked me to add, which is um, to clarify I'm um, swimming at the beach. Okay, and I had yes, said right. that it was that restricted to memberships, but in fact, earlier. you can That's can't... just a hold over from some old language that right. doesn't okay. apply anymore. So right. that's two small mm -hmm. changes. Well, I, all I can say is that the <laughs> level of expertise in this town is infinite. Uh, it's amazing. Exactly. <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> so, okay. Mm, knowledge. Is yes. Um, so I'm, I'm fine with those two, but I do have a question, Mary, and that is now that you've gone uh, recommending five to seven. Yep. Um, I'm wondering, you know, we talked about at least two members of the task force that reside outside of yep. White Pond. And, you know, I'm wondering, that most was when it was... Most of them reside outside of White Pond, of the seven. I'm sorry, I, yeah, didn't, okay. I didn't let you finish. Yeah, okay, so, yeah. So uh, what I was thinking is that just to make sure that we still had that we external do. voice. We do. So, um, yeah, and then this is... Hopefully they're going to stay with it from start to finish. So out of the seven people that we have now, um, two are in the White Pond watershed. One is right on the edge, okay, and the other four are outside of the White Pond watershed. Okay, so, that's good. Yeah, just yeah. Okay, we'll see. Okay, so can I have a motion? All right, move to approve the White Pond Task Force charge with the amendments as highlighted in the select board packet. Um, for tonight. Second. Have a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, we're moving right along yeah. here. Okay. I guess we don't have any nominee. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Nominations. Okay. We have, is nominations next? I think it is. All right. Joe Emmerich of 611 Old Bedford Road for a term to expire April 30th, 2027. And Alyssa Brown of 5 Concord Green Unit 1 to the White Pond Task Force for a term to expire December 2023 upon completion of the final report to the select board. Actually, there was supposed to be someone added to that. John Coleman, 65... I think you've got a different version here. Oh. Okay, I have the one Shannon just gave me. 
on mine, I have. I don't have John Coleman. No, I, I don't. Okay, this is the V two of the uh, packet. It would be really helpful when we keep getting successive agendas and packages that they would be labeled with version numbers. Well, this I, one is. This one is, yeah. has V2 on it. And it's not on there, you're right. And it's yeah. not on there. It so, is on Mary, um, I know I had asked Donna or Chris to amend the agenda for me when I was out on Wednesday. So I'm trying to see if that is at least reflected on the town's website that's posted right now. It's okay. We'll we'll nominate uh, John next. We're meeting a week from today, right? right. Okay. We'll nominate him. It's the White Pine Task Force. Okay. Yeah, okay. and so then we would be able to appoint him the 19th. Great. Okay. That's fine. All right, then move to appointments. Move to appoint Evan Richter of 104 Bolton Street to the White Pond Task Force for a term to expire December 2023 upon completion of the final report to the select board. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's time for liaison reports. I'll go first. I didn't have any this week. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, that's unusual, Terry. Oh, uh, gosh. So I can go next. Sure. Um, I just had two. One is the, um, there was sponsored by uh, MSA on affordable housing funding. It was one hour. I think I you went to that. Yeah, you were there as well. Actually disappointing. It was very high level. Yeah. Um, no opportunity for questions or whatever. Um, but they just laid out a whole bunch of categories of what funding was available. You'd still have to have the expertise to get in and out of all of it. Um, the second thing I want to comment on is that at the uh, Concord Housing Authority meeting, they have an upcoming um, expiration of term for one of their members uh, by the next town meeting and pursuant to um, Mass General Laws 368 I think it is um, there are now some uh, of the acts of 2021 there are some very specific um, new guidelines of how a tenant uh, a resident tenant has to be appointed for the next available expiring seat so they're decreasing the elected officials from four to three and taking one of the elected positions and um, uh, specifically for um, um, a, a resident tenant. So there are, um, I believe the town clerk was going to be notified today and then there are very specific uh, time frames when um, you have to wait for the residents to identify whether or not they want to fill that seat. Then after that time period, we have so many days before the select board responds to that, and <laughs> we are the uh, the appointing, appointing authority. authority. Yeah, it was very interesting, kind of how that happened. It wasn't like somebody left the board; it was that one of their board members, who was a tenant, um, essentially um, financed himself out of his eligibility, <clears throat> so he had to move out because he was no longer eligible. So he's still a member of the, the housing authority, but he is no longer a tenant. Right, but he is, so there was a waiver for that individual, but um, under the, but he was elected. So he will remain in his elected seat. Mm -hmm. And it's actually another seat, it's another seat that is expiring, someone who was filling that interim term. Anyway, it will be coming back to us for um, action pri prior to the April town meeting. So is there a process if no tenants apply or if more there than is, there is about if more than one tenant applies? Um, there's a whole that's specified yep. a second level, a third okay. level. But in the end, if there was nobody stepped up and you couldn't um, find anyone who was a resident tenant, then we would appoint just someone that we felt okay. had to be a resident though. So that's what's tricky. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Anyway, there's a, um, it'll be coming to us. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess maybe I'll go next. Um, so I attended, uh, first of all, the housing production plan forum, which many of you did. 
um, the Climate Action Advisory Board and uh, the Comprehensive Sustainability and Energy Committee, which I just mentioned earlier in this meeting, um, is going to propose a warrant article for the new uh, energy code. Uh, also went to the middle school building. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you, Matt. Um, are they working with the planning board on this? That is definitely a touch point. I don't know if, I mean, I have sent out a note highlighting that to the planning department. Okay. Okay. okay so because of that fact, and they, and Elizabeth Hughes responded that she was expecting that they would take such an action. Okay. Because that's available, um, and I actually responded with a question to her because. You can either adopt the uh, code in the middle of the year, uh, July 1st, or at the end of the year, December 31st. So the earliest we could adopt it at town meeting would be July 1st. And I asked the question whether it would be a burden on the uh, commissioner, you know, building commissioner to uh, do it that quickly. Haven't heard back yet. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, but that, that would be probably the most important thing, feedback to get from the planning department. Um, then the middle school building committee uh, met, and I think that anyone who attended the uh, finance committee special town meeting hearing uh, was probably aware of the discussions that took place there. But um, basically, uh, the committee voted to actually increase the budget uh, by uh, folding back in two items that had been taken out through value engineering. And that is the wood look ceiling and the um, the bleachers for the gym. But they are still on there, the first two items on the list for um, the uh, alt uh, deducts. So in other words, if the, you know, if, if the bidders, uh, you know, considered that they could only make the budget by removing items and proposing that, then they will be the first two items on the list. The committee also discussed other potential items of the list and is now collecting further suggestions. And we'll have a subsequent meeting where they'll have a full list of those deduct items that can be used. Okay, good. Okay? Good. Um, so, and then of course, this the special town meeting hearing, and then I went to the finance committee guidelines meeting on uh, the what was it the twenty first um, that followed, and the guideline has been raised, so it had been at three percent, and now it's at three point six five percent um with uh what a five percent for the town yes, and then the remainder split between cps and and the high school. Uh, the, you know, the regional school district. Um, and then uh, there was also a school committee meeting, uh, which I only partially attended. I, I was, at, the, at that point, I was yeah, meeting fine. out. Uh, so, um, and, and it was a, a fairly uh, quiet agenda, actually, at least as much as I attended. Uh, okay, anybody else for the okay. report? Yes, okay. Mary. Um, the Economic Vitality Committee met after a somewhat a hiatus over the summer, and um, they're going to, they're very interested in two warrant articles that will be proposed by the planning board. One is to allow food trucks under certain circumstances, and the other is to allow fast food restaurants. Um, they're especially interested in that because of feeding all the people that are coming in for the 250th celebration so we'll see what's going to be proposed by the planning board wow fast food restaurants yep is wow. that a temporary thing for just the 250 i or? told you everything i know okay okay wow. and, uh, yeah well i think i'm, I'm not gonna uh, this, I, i'll just yeah okay. we'll learn more from the planning board and i'm sure they're going to flesh out a lot of these things I, again i went to the hpp the housing production plan forum I wrote some um, suggestions up and sent them in, and um, they were well received. So that worked. I thought the forum was well done, and and people really are listening. Um, I went to the ribbon cutting ceremony at Concord Park. They, you know, they expanded oh. over there. That was a wonderful ceremony. Um, Linda was there as well. It was um, Mike Barrett was there. Um, Simon Cataldo was there. It was in the place is beautiful. So that was a nice event. Mm -hmm. It was a very nice spread. And then the other thing I just wanted to mention was that um, 
at the finance committee meeting, we had a brief presentation by Bob around debt service that I thought was something we should probably take a deeper look at because our debt service policy is kind of all over the place. I, th I think we could tighten it up. I wish we had had more time at that meeting. So maybe, I know we've got, maybe sometime in the spring, we can start taking a look at our, our, our debt policy. And he also mentioned the possibility of a stormwater management enterprise fund which I thought was fascinating as well. So that's something. A, a what enterprise? Stormwater management. Oh, enterprise yeah, yeah, fund, right, right. Which I think is something yeah. we've been kicking around for years. But now that I'm on the White Pond Task Force, I realize for people who live on private roads, that's a, that's a real issue. So, and for the town's budget, we're spending a lot of money on maintenance mm -hmm. instead of spending money on improvements. So it's, it's something we should explore as far as um, doing a good management, good stormwater management without having to wait or have that cut during um, budget mm -hmm. discussions. And actually, Mary, you reminded me that just yesterday I went to 51 Walden Street and uh, attended the oh, yeah. uh, Blues May Alcott birthday oh, commemoration, oh, yeah. 190th birthday, and read the proclamation that we signed um, at that event. Oh, good. Great. Okay, who else? Mr. Dane. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I think we're done, okay. as far as I'm concerned. It's 835. Okay. Uh, then uh, I think that takes us to correspondence. As you can see, we had a number of pieces of correspondence in our packet this week. Um, so I draw people's attention to those. And uh, now we took a little bit out of order tonight, the consent agenda. We just thought that we had such a heavy packed agenda tonight that we were gonna push that to the end. So could you- Okay, move to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? second? Okay, second. all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and uh, we now will have the town manager's report. Uh, well, you know, it might be a good idea to put these things at the end that yeah. we don't want to have people have to sit through. Well, we normally would like people to I hear like from our town manager. Report. The consent agenda <laughs> that we can do at the end, right. but yes. I'm not sure how I feel about presenting this very exciting report at the end of the meeting, but <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best here. So just referring to the report that was sent out, probably not included in your packet because of the holiday. Um, as you know, I've appointed Captain Thomas Mulcahy to the position of interim police chief. That is effective uh, December 23rd, 2022, uh, upon the retirement of our police chief, Joseph O'Connor, who has served the town for about nine years, uh, but 36 years in uh, wow. police hmm. service. So we wish him well on his retirement. Um, the police department successfully deployed a drone which was used to locate a missing person that was in the last couple of weeks we have five officers that are trained and certified in the use of of uh, drones for uh, public safety activities i thought that was pretty interesting something i didn't know before it appeared in the report our um, cpd honor guard participated in the veterans day ceremony from our fire department uh, Lieutenant Dave Nichols reported that there is an increase in permits for oil tank removals. I thought this was also interesting. He included some links on a couple of stories that have appeared recently on um, oil tank failures and the havoc they can wreak. Um, so that that is some interesting information. Also, a, a link to an article about why fire departments actually ins inspect oil tanks on a on a um, or, or inspect oil tank removals as they happen was there a question no um, the closing date for issuing new permits to work in the right-of-way is november 15 except for emergencies the engineering division will be asking contractors to wrap up work as soon as possible to allow for winter operations in right-of-ways uh, a note here about street paving the last of the major paving work was completed last week. Certain streets planned for repaving this year were not completed for reasons that included delays caused by National Grid, which you are very much aware of. 
um, bid costs exceeding budgets and shortage of materials. These streets along with others to be selected, um, well, that doesn't seem to make sense. Uh, anything that wasn't completed in, um, in this most recent construction season will be considered for our next, our upcoming construction Including season. Including on my street. <laughs> <laughs> um, we continue our restriping of, of streets, but are still having some issues completing that because of shortages of materials and labor. Oh, well, they've um, run out of stripes. They've run out of stripes along with uh, everything <laughs> else. <laughs> stripes, is, stripes are hard to come by these days. Um, a note from our building inspections department. There's a lot of activity going there. You noted that we've had some significant new growth. I think the last time that we saw that level of new growth was probably in 2017 upon the completion of the hotel. Mm -hmm. um, but that, yeah, that 1.2 million is is much higher than what we have seen, and we're definitely seeing that activity in the in the building inspections department. Uh, somebody else already mentioned the housing production plan, so I will skip that. The Historical Commission has filed a grant to prepare a historic preservation plan. They have also submitted additional comment as a part of the Section 106 review process on the Route 2A um, corridor changes. Planning staff met with Minuteman National Historical Park staff to talk about wayfinding signage and they're specifically focusing on people who arrive to the park by train or other transit methods. Um, on behalf of the town, I would like to recognize the service of Dr. Deb Green, who completed her term on the Board of Health. She was instrumental in providing guidance and assistance to the Board of Health during the pandemic. We are forever grateful for her service and wish her well in her future endeavors. And then finally, just a note that last week we received word that the land court decided the Estabrook case in favor of the town. We are in the process of reviewing the decision with town council and have no further comment at this time. And that's it. Okay. And my chair's remarks just this time are just to emphasize uh, relative to the Estabrook litigation and the finding um, by the land court, just that you know, as always, uh, we recommend and, and really urge the public uh, to have civility, respect for property, um, and to follow the rules that are established for the trail. And uh, that that's always been the case and, and continues to be the case. No matter what. No matter what. Okay. So I think that brings um, us do we have, to public comment. Right. Do we have a, um, our schedule done for January and February, or did it? Yes, only, we have a full our, calendar. I don't know that it's been published, but I, I have dates. I have all the dates. Maybe I should tell people about them. Um, <laughs> you, <laughs> if you, you want us to show up. You might have, and I don't know where I put um, it. So, so, yes, what I have for is uh, January 9th. 23rd and 30th, then February 13th and 27th. 13th and 27th? Yep. What was this, the last one with Janu January 30th. 9th, 30th? Well, that's uh, the 23rd and 30th. The 23rd and 30th, okay. Yeah. Okay, and then March 6th, 20th, and 27th. Mm -hmm. Then April 10th and 24th. And then town meeting on April 30th. And then it's no longer my <laughs> concern. <laughs> Counting the days. <laughs> yes, it is. And in, in this December, we have the 5th next week and the 19th. Is that correct? That's right. What? You said, what? We have the 5th this coming Monday. And we have December 19th. And we don't have the 12th. We don't have a meeting right. on the 12th. Because it's on the calendar, but that's because right. we changed it. We'll just take that off. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, I don't have a plan. It, so, yeah. Okay. Is there a date? Well, I guess we, I could ask the board. So, you know, we have a tradition of a holiday event. And, oh. you know, so there's a question of whether we have an opportunity to get together. So, um, 
maybe, I don't know. We Let's can do it. That. So. Well, one of our problems has been, as you heard, um, many of the establishments are now closing around nine o'clock on Mondays. If we we're going to do it after a yeah, select we used board to meeting. Do Probably it shouldn't after. do it before a select board meeting. Especially on, yeah. Monday, especially on Mondays when a lot of places are closed. closed. Right. Can, can we ask when to stay open? Like, well, we set the we set the hours. <laughs> no, that's I think that's, that's a hard called no. Quid pro quo. <laughs> no, we don't do that. Um, okay, well, well, I'll I'll Let's propose joke. I'll I'll send out a like a doodle poll or something. We'll try to figure out right. when we can get to okay. that. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So I think we're ready for uh, public comment. If you would like to make a public comment, I see we have someone in the room. Board booth one forty four right road. Okay. Uh, I didn't Just know the select board had these perks to set hours until tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not usually considered a perk. <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, relative to your late hours. Uh, I'm uh, here to borrow this microphone to invite you and invite the community to a uh, gathering this Sunday, December 4, 2 o'clock at the Fenn School. The Human Rights Council will be uh, hosting a conversation with Chief O'Connor on the occasion of his retirement, and uh, we'd love to have the community join us. Thank you. Thank you. What time was it? Two o'clock. So Sunday. we're going to try to get it in right before the gathering here on the mill dam. So, so the tree lighting. You got the tree lighting. Right, the tree yeah. Lighting. Okay. And that, I think, gets underway at two with the lighting, what, at dusk, perhaps. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, if there's anyone with public other comment, uh, please use the raise hand feature of Zoom. It's available under reactions at the bottom of the screen. I do not see anybody. Actually, while we're waiting for that, I have a question about this Saturday. The select board is going to be running that meeting. Is that right? The preview meeting? I yes. think I, I chair it. Yeah. Yeah. And that will be here in the in It's the town in the hall? hearing room. Right. At nine o'clock, right? Yeah. Is it a noticed select board meeting or no? Um it is a noticed meeting. Right. Yeah. Okay. With and there'll be a Zoom option. Yeah. Okay. All right. With that, I think we can adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Matt.